nemesis upon nemesis would um, continue to catch up with offenders, especially people who uh, meddle their hands into public funds. Funds meant for the Nigerian people and um, funds meant for the welfare of the masses that are actually willingly uh, exercise their franchise by voting you into power, all right, whatever public office uh, uh, you are and whatever uh, uh, appointment you had. It's supposed and it is actually uh, uh, expected that you hold these offices with the fear of God and, um, you know, with much competence and, cap and capacity. But uh, we have, uh, we are not so lucky in Nigeria, back at home, to have um, leaders who uh, have our interests at heart. My name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower. I have a beam light on the case of alleged 6.9 billion naira fraud involving uh, the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshe, and um, the former national security advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki, and a company known as Spotless Investment Limited. This trial has been adjourned over the years and now it has continued this year and um, this particular time okay yes so i am bringing the expose straight to you they thought we wouldn't know but we have a grip on the information ayo fayoshi after his tenure as governor of Ekiti state you remember when he came to the efcc office with his imprinted shirt uh with the inscription efcc i am here or thereabouts yes uh, he said uh, he was actually happy to come to the efcc office and this time around, the case has continued. Ayo Fayoshe thought he would be safe because Asiwajubola Ahmed Tinobu, whom he happens to be a very close scrutiny to, despite their um, party differences or their difference in part, political parties, thought he may be safe. But this time around, he may not escape this. As a result, we decided to um, delve into investigations and we found out that there was a court session recently organized or recently held for the trial of Ayo Fayoshe and um, the people involved in this alleged 6.9 billion naira money laundering case. A 13th prosecution witness in the trial of Ayo Fayoshe, former Ekiti State Governor, and one Mr. Abubakar Aliyu Madaki, an operative of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, was held. And according to Abubakar Aliyu Madaki, the operative with the EFCC, he told Justice Chukujeku Aneke of the Federal High Court sitting in Nikoi, Lagos, that the sum of 1.2 billion naira received by the former governor from former Minister of State for Defense, Musliu Obanikoro, came from the impressed accounts domiciled in the office of former National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki. Fayoshe and his company, Spotless Investment Limited, were rearranged on Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, on 11 count charges bordering on money laundering and stealing to the tune of 6.9 billion naira. At the resumed trial on Friday, Madaki, the EFCC operative, led in evidence by the prosecution counsel. Mr. Rotimi Jacobs, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, gave a blow-by-blow -blow detail of the investigations into the sum of 1.2 billion naira that Mr. Obanikoro claimed was taken to Fayoshe in an aircraft. The money was released from the impressed account in the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF, under the control of the former National Security Advisor, NSA, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, now retired. The claim by the first defendant that the 1.2 billion naira received from the former Minister of State for Defense, Musliu Obanikoro, was the campaign funds from his political party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was investigated. In that investigation, according to sources, the PDP was contacted and the Secretary in Abuja was also contacted. The party denied receiving any money from the National Security Advisor or from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. The party also said it did not give any campaign money to Senator Musliu Obanikoro to give the first defendant, Ayo Fayoshe. So, by implication, the funds moved from Diamond Bank to Zenith Bank were clearly the funds that came from the impressed account 
which was under the control of the Office of the National Security Advisor to President Goodluck Jonathan, then Colonel Sambo Dasuki, now retired. The witness further told the court that the former Ekiti State Governor bought properties worth 270 million naira from one Mr. Rabiu Kundili in Abuja and also deposited in a fixed account the sum of 100 million out of the 1.2 billion naira. According to him, between June 17th and June 27th, 2014, the sum of 150 million naira cash was lodged into the bank account of the second defendant, that is, one company named Spotless Investment Limited, who is allegedly owned by Ayo Fayoshe. This money was lodged in the bank by one Abiodun Agwele, who was an aide to Fayoshe. He also told the court that the sum of 168 million naira was deposited allegedly into the same company Spotless Investment Limited's bank account on 24th of August 2016. The witness, who is an operative with the EFCC, further told the court that both Fayoshe and Biodun Agbele could not explain the source of the money deposited into the account of the second defendant that is the company known as Spotless Investment Limited. The case was, however, adjourned till 24th of November, 2023 for continuation of hearing. Fayoshi and his company, Spotless Investment Limited, were first arraigned on 22nd day of October, 2018, before Justice Mojisola Olato Regu. All right, um, that was Ayo Fayoshi's case uh, involving his company, uh, known as Spotless Investment Limited. You never knew why Ofayoshi owned Spotless Investment Limited, right? Today, you know that he owns that particular company. And that was the same company that was used to launder money in the range of $1.2 billion and above. Okay, and um, of course, this is their style. This is their way of operation. They steal these monies from the public coffers and they remit it to either pu uh, public accounts or they remit it to either um, classified accounts or current accounts that belong to companies or other government agencies. But this particular plan has been known already. So I guess for them to successfully steal money from the Nigerian government, they should deduce, or these politicians should deduce uh, more efficient ways because we are wiser now. All right. Uh, well, that is that on that case. And I hope to follow up on this case too on um, the 24th day or 23rd, 23rd to 24th day of november 2023 when it was adjourned to it will be very 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 interesting to see ayo fayoshi go to jail he has been working freely and he thinks uh, that he is safe thank god the people's democratic party denied his their involvement with um that sum of money kudos to the people's democratic party and its hierarchy now um secondly on the issue happening in Imo state the traders union congress which i am i'm trying to give you an overview of what happened really because you would not take the story from the nigerian police force neither will you take the, take the story from the emo state government or from the dss all right the story from the nigerian labor congress will be what we would hear all right because that is public opinion of course um the trade union congress and the nigerian labor congress have granted a press conference in respect to the recent assault on its president, Comrade Joe Ajairo in Imo State over a planned peaceful protest. Please stay tuned for the press release uh, by the NLC and the TUC by its spokesperson, the um, deputy president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Mr. Adeyanju Adewale. The Council Secretariat in Oguri, while waiting for his colleagues to join him for a peaceful protest rally. They came in a convoy of vehicles and gun trucks hooded and armed to the teeth. Yeah, Comrade Joe Adero was blindfolded, beaten to a pop, brutalized, humiliated and violated by the police personnel and taken to unknown destination where he was subjected to more battery and torture, as well as threatening with death before help who came in 
his way. Fear the National Security Advisor, Mr. Nuru Ribado, who order for his immediate release. However, due to the severity of his injuries, the police are taking him to the police headquarters where we made contact with him at 3.30 p.m. At the time of our first contact with Comrade Joe Adero, his right eye was popped, black and soft. One of his ears has tiny trace of dry blood. His speech was blurred and incoherent. He had words of all over him. He did not recognize the people around him and he could not walk without being what? Aided or supported. Preferably, he had to be taken to Federal Medical Center, Uri, in Imo State, for, for, for further investigation. At Federal Medical, Medical Center, Congratulo, after he was stabilized, was referred to investigation, a head and breast scan, a full body scan, chest x-ray, a full body scan, and cervical spine therapy, among others investigations, and promptly fitted with a net collar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Comrade Jero was not the only one beaten and arrested by the police, but he was the major target. Those received the most bestial and repressive treatment. He was stripped of his dignity as a human being and as the president of this Nigeria Legal Congress, NLC. He was also stripped of his personal items, including the phones, money, and other electronic gadgets. His vehicle was smashed and tires ripped off. Others who were also with him were outbeaten by the police, including workers. The TVC crew who were arrested and detained, they had their cameras seized for filming and being in possession of evidence the police would not want the whole world to see. The Allies TV crew narrowly escaped being brutalized. Earlier on, who not sent by the state governor and stationed themselves around the streets, including the sectariat, where were picking up workers who had reported at the sectariat and dispensing them of their personal items, including money and phones and laptops. We are worried that it has called criminal for workers in Nigeria to gather for a peaceful protest where Section 40 of the Nigeria Constitution and the International Confession, like the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the African Chapter on Human and People's Rights, including High Elu Confession 87 and 98, guarantees the right to freedom of association and the right of to bargaining collectively. It is more absurd that these infractions will even happen at all and still continue to happen, especially when Nigeria sits at the chairman of the governing board of the ILO. Accordingly, about this already held continue of Comrade Joe Ajeru, our leader, outraged by the bestial treatment method on him, to workers including Ajero and journalists by the police and Inimo state government. Stunned by this complicity of a federal agency such as Nigeria Police, irritated by the defense of the Imo State Police Command that only took Ajero Ajero into protective custody from where he emerged, battered, consumed, bought, hide, the, the, the debilitated and condemned. That is the police. Worried by this constitutional silence of the federal government and the aloofness of the federal security agency, who were formally notified of our presence in the state, they removed to take step to offer protections. So, okay, okay. Uh, you've heard it from the deputy Nigerian Labour Congress president there. Well, well, um, this case is um, going further. I never imagined. I will only say that Comrade Joe Ajero has a skeleton in his cupboard together with the TUC um, president, that is uh, Mr. Osifo, 
all of them have skeletons in their cupboard because um, if you look at the whole matter you would know that there are certain things that have not been said and they have been you know they have been concealed okay why would um, hopus or dema have the the, the 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 right and have the you know the guts to approach him with such force if they have not had deals in the past or in the dark all right we we'll would look into this and investigate okay to that effect i am bringing still um a reaction from the tuc by its president festus osifo now according to festus osifo in this video hope uzadema the emo state governor is yet to achieve even 10 percent of the agreement he signed with the nlc and the trade union congress I want us to really listen to Festus Osifo in this particular video and in this interview because he made um, you know clear and he made known lots of revelations that we don't even know about Hopu Zodema and his involvement with the TUC and the NLC. I think this part may actually lead us or may be a leadway to the reasons why um, Comrade Joe Ajayro was beaten blue black at the planned peaceful protest in Imo State recently. Stay tuned. It is wrong for him to have questioned the business that uh, Comrade Joe Algeru, uh, president of NLC, had in Imo State. No, because Imo State is part of Nigeria. The Imo State chapter, the Imo State Council of NLC, is also part and parcel of, of the NLC um, at large. And also, not just NLC alone, even TUC was there, the Secretary General of Trade Union Congress of Nigeria led the delegation of TUC also to Imo State. And so it was a joint action. So uh, it is it is unheard of for you to ask what is the president of NLC doing in a state in Nigeria where you have Nigerian workers. I think anybody that is asking that does not really understand the modus of Parandi. And again, I think what you should ask him, uh, Governor Hope Uzodima, was that he has signed several communiques with the workers. He has signed several communiques with the NLC and TUC. He should bring that communique and show it to Nigerians and take the items that he has closed up in the communique he signed. So if he brings that communique today and he has, he has achieved even 10% of what is in that communique, he will have justification to talk. But as I can tell you, a lot of things in that communique that he signed, maybe we'll forward it to you. Okay. A lot uh, of things in that communique that he signed, he has not implemented a single of them. So, so, let me so quickly. Him, you know, it's very easy in Nigeria for you to say everything is politics. It's very easy. Okay, let, us, me, let me bring in this. Perhaps this is, this is people. not politics. All right, all right. Um, that was um, Festus Osifo, the president of the Trade Union Congress. Well, he was trying to be blur, blurry in his statements, or he was trying to be blunt, but um, any intelligent person, any smart person will deduce the truth from what he said there. Well, I, 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 am, I am actually dedicated to see that um, the Comrade Joe Ajero case and Uhupu Zodima's case is, um, you know, is squashed in no time because the, uh, the workers in Nigeria, the NLC and its members need to you know, need to you know, make their grievances known to the government. Because this particular occurrence, I think, is meant to distract people from the main objectives of the NLC and from the main demands of the NLC and the TUC. This is not so. Hope Uzodema is playing high-class politics and dirty politics in Imo State. And he should be called to order. If he cannot be called order to order, the people of Imo State should not vote him back into power in December. That is all I have to say on this until I have more uh, beam light you know shown on this particular issue thank you so much for staying this far with us before i say quit i would love to urge you to please do the needful you know what you always do for us like our videos don't relent to like our videos don't relent, don't relent to share them don't relent to view till the end because all these things you do will make us serve you better youtube uses these algorithms to make us go viral all right thank you so much for staying this far and finally don't forget to um, drop a comment for us in the comment section because the more your comments come, the more we go so, so popular and the more we serve you better. Tap the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get to see me first time when I drop an information. See you next time. Bye.